Hello everyone. My today's point of discussion is, uh, it's a series I am starting from today, that is the disorders of blood coagulation. In this topic, we will discuss different types of disorders that are associated with the blood coagulation process. And this is part 1. Now, what is disorders of blood coagulation? Coagulation disorders are disruption in the body's ability to control blood clotting. That means, when normally blood clotting is not possible in the body, then there is a problem of continuous bleeding from the wounds or the cuts from the body. It may be internal, it may be external. So, this, is, uh, this can be called as a coagulation disorder. It can happen either due to clinical cause or hereditary issue. So, two causes uh, are there. Number one is clinical cause and number two is it can be descendant from the ancestors. The major cause is deficiency of the vitamin K in blood. We all know that vitamin K is a very important factor for the uh, proper formation, proper maturation of the platelet as well as proper activation of the platelets and it helps in the the process of the blood coagulation too. Coagulation disorders can result in either a hemorrhage or thrombosis. So, uh, two results can come from the coagulation disorder that uh, a person can suffer from hemorrhage or uh, can suffer from the thrombosis. Now, there are two terms hemorrhage and thrombosis. Now, what is hemorrhage? Too little clotting that causes an increased risk of bleeding that means when from an wound or cut there is a continuous bleeding or there is a very uh, lower uh, frequency or very less amount of uh, very less amount of time is taken for continuous bleeding and long time is taken for the coagulation that is called hemorrhage. Now what is thrombosis? It is too much clotting that causes the blood clots to obstruct the blood flow. That means it is not comes under the scheduled coagulation time of the body. Before the coagulation time, the blood clots within the main blood vessels and this is called a thrombosis. Now we will see the classification of disorders of blood coagulation. So coagulation disorders can be classified into disorders result in too much bleeding that means the when the bleeding continues and the disorders result in too much clotting where the clotting occurs before the scheduled clotting time. Now disorders results in too much bleeding involves hemophilia, then a platelet dysfunction, then DIC that is disseminated intravascular coagulopathy or coagulation, then von Willebrand disease then maldevelopment of uh, circulating anticoagulants and uh, vitamin K deficiency. It has been considered to be the main factor. Now, uh, regarding disorders result in too much clotting, we can say we can see antiphospholipid antibody syndrome or APS. Then factor five ledane. <coughs> Sorry. Then proteinase deficiency, then uh, protein C deficiency and antithrombin 3 deficiency. Now our today's topic of discussion is antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. Let us go to the tutorial. Before that if you are new to my channel do not forget to subscribe my channel, like and share my videos and get notified by subscribing it and get the uh, daily update of uh, or the daily uploaded new new educational videos in my channel. Now what is antiphospholipid antibody syndrome or APS? It is an autoimmune hypercoagulable state. Hypercoagulable means where the blood coagulates before the scheduled clotting time caused by antiphospholipid antibodies. APS causes blood clots in arteries and veins. So there are two main uh, target part of our body of this antibodies that are the arteries and the vein. 
It also provokes pregnancy related complications like stillbirth, miscarriage, uh, preterm delivery and severe preeclampsia. So, these are the pregnancy related complications which can be uh, done uh, by this antiphospholipid antibodies. It is also termed as uh, Hugo's syndrome. So, it is the synonym of APS. It is more common in women than men. This disease was described in full in 1980s by Nagel and Aziz. Now, what are the severity of APS? What, how much severe it is? APS can be primary or secondary in nature. So, APS can be classified as primary APS and secondary APS. Now, primary APS occurs in absence of any other related disease. That means there only that um, antiphospholipid antibody will be present and it will cause the harm to the body. In case of the secondary APS that occurs with other autoimmune diseases like SLF, sorry, SLE. Now, what is the full form of SLE? That is the systemic lupus edematis. In rare cases, APS leads to rapid organ failure due to generalized thrombosis. That means uh, in this severe case or this uh, rare cases, the uh, this blood clots occurs in the not only in the arteries and veins and in the main organs also, which causes the organ failure. This is termed as CAPS or CAPS or the catastrophic antiphospholipid syndrome or assertion syndrome. It is associated with a high risk of death. It is natural that when the organ fails or the functions of the organ stops, then automatically a part of the body is non-functional in, uh, non in nature and gradually the total body collapses. So, now is the time to test yourself. All the, uh, all the questions are uh, given here with the answers in the video. Hope you have understood this part and it is not yet uh, over. We have still to study the uh, treatment, the signs and symptoms of the APS which will be covered in the next video. So, thank you for your patient listening and it will continue to part 2 where we will complete the APS and we will start some new one. Keep in touch. So long. Bye-bye.